Good evening, this is the Housing Committee. Uh, today is uh, July 24, 2017. Uh, members present are the Vice Chair, Mark LaPlante, and Estella Reyes, Councillor for District uh, B. Uh, we have a two items agenda tonight. Uh, and let's, let's get started. So we have a new item, item 171, uh, 171, 17. What? Like I said, good evening. This is the Housing Committee, uh, July 24, 2017. We have two items tonight. Uh, item 171.17, this is the dispos disposition of 5 Bruce Street, a map lot uh, 170, map 170 lot 8, and this is being referred to the Housing Committee by Liza. Liza, um, I would like to give you the opportunity to explain uh, the disposition of 5 Bruce Street. Mm -hmm. I'd like to approach and um, give you some documents. Um, 5 Spruce, um, Spruce Street, it's a city-owned lot um, that we are proposing a yard sale to the abutter. The um, assessment is uh, 5,900 square feet. This um, lot abuts the Speaker River, so there are conditions and restrictions with the property, one of which is that the city will be reserving an easement to um, make repairs to the bridge if needed in the future. The applicant will also have um, to file a and r plan to merge the city owned lot with the applicant's property. So, Liza, this is five Bruce Street that we're talking about, right? Yes. And um, the size of that lot is 5,060 square feet. Mm -hmm. uh, usually those, uh, we've been approving those type of uh, Mm -hmm. The lot on that size as a buildable lot, what's the difference between the older ones and this one? So this one abuts the Spicker River. We can't allow construction in that side. So this is just a yard sale. It has a restriction that they can only use the lot for parking and green space. Um, the city will be reserving an access easement um, abutting the river so that if in case the river, um, the bridge needs repair, we can go into the property and make the repairs as needed. So it will um, also include this um, restriction. On the time. So we have discussed this item before. So councillors, uh, um, there's any questions for Liza? Before, before we make a motion, let's, make, let's, let's go to the reception. Isa, usually, do we, do, did you submit the, the, the restriction that we're gonna, we're gonna have? Okay, here. So the restrictions are on the second page. Um, they must okay. comply with a purchase and sales agreement. They must um, include an approval not required for a subdivision plan merging the lot. Um, they must include a landscape plan, a stormwater management plan, and they can only use the parcel for parking and green space. Construction will not be allowed. All right, Councilor, what's the motion on this item? Motion to approve. Second, discussion. Uh, the, and there is a motion on the table, probably uh, second, discussion. Councilor Laplante. Thank you. Liza, is the applicant here this evening? Yes, she is. Uh, may, she may she approach? Actually, no, no, not again. <laughs> this one, sorry. Um. 
Good evening. In your name, ma'am? To you, Mr. President and sure. Chairman. Jacqueline Caceres, 7 Spruce Street. So I just want to make sure, through you, Mr. Chairman, that uh, Ms. Caceres? Caceres. Caceres is aware that this is to be used only as open space. Uh, there is no structure, no building that can be placed on there. Uh, through you, are you aware of that restriction? It's an important restriction. Are you aware of it? Yeah. Okay. And you're going to be using it for either some place for green space or parking, correct? And that's it? Mm hmm Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have another question for her. Yes. Oh, for her? Um, yeah. He has another question for you. My question to you is, have you uh, talked to the, um, anybody at the state level, perhaps DP or, or anybody at the, uh, at the state, in terms of getting this property and be aware of the restriction um, because you are right around the river? Repeat that question one more time. If you've been in contact with uh, with anybody at the state level uh, and knowing the restriction firsthand of having a lot right around the Speaker River or any river here, no? Okay. I just want to make sure that um, if you know about the, those restrictions, um, because what's been happening lately is that uh, well, not happening lately, but I mean, there is some restriction that you've got to be aware of, and I hope that uh, eventually you'll find out before we close this uh, cell. This, uh. Okay. All right, no more questions. Uh, counselors, uh, there is a motion on the table, properly second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Uh, we're going to be meeting to discuss this item. August 15th. And August 15. August 15. August 15. And uh, we're going to have this item. Uh, we're going to be presenting this item to the full council. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So you take a Thank you. The only item that we have on the agenda is uh, 337 16. This is uh, 65 Area 3. Um, but, councillors, before I get to. to Yes, uh, 337-16, this is 65 Ferrier Street. Um, uh, to update and provide explanation on the tax lands uh, process and uh, communications from the attorney Brian Callahy. And um, so we're here today, uh, and I would like to um, go into details with this item. Um, Liza, can you give us your version about this item, please? So it's 65 Ferry Street. It's now a city-owned property. This is a two-family home. Um, what happens when we foreclose on a tax lien property is the um, owner of the property um, stops paying real estate taxes. We file a complaint in court. It's a long, lengthy, um, lengthy process, and um, then we get, get a judgment. We, the court gives the applicant a year redemption period after the judgment to the city. Um, this was foreclosed last year. Um, I believe it was August 18th, and the redemption period has expired on it. Actually, it was June 16th of last year. Um, obviously, this is a, a family home where people are living there. It's not, we don't want to foreclose on, on properties, but if they don't make payments on taxes, that's the end result. Liza, how many times have you put this? Uh, um, how many times this uh, this property has been uh, into the process uh, for an um, R R F P process or bidding process? R F P. We have not started the process for that property. You haven't started the process. We um, wait the year redemption period, and after that period expires, then we start the R F P process. So you're in the process of waiting for a year mm -hmm. before. The, we start the process. We declared this property as a surplus back then, like probably six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, That's the first step before we can do a disposition, is, is declare a surplus. Um, 
So we, we declared a surplus, we waited the, the one year redemption. It expires in June, June 16th of, uh, of this year. So the foreclosure was last year. They were notified immediately of that foreclosure. Um, we've tried to um, call them. Um, Brian uh, Carrigan is here. He can give you more information about the communications we had with the property owner. Um, my job is just the disposition um, surplusing it. All right. Let me let me let me rephrase my question again. Mm -hmm. How many times this this property has been into the bidding process into the bidding war? Zero time. Zero time. Mm -hmm. So how can you have six bidders? So it's been at least one. It has that that number is when it was surplus. Everything that comes through the city council it needs a docket number. So when I brought it in to get it surplus, it was done in 2016. And that's where you get that docket number. One second. Give me one second, please. Oh. Okay. Um, sorry about that. All right, Councillor, there is any questions for Eliza? Because I, was, I'm, I apologize because I was talking uh, about another property. No problem. Um, I got a question, Mr. Chair. Sure. So this is, I think this is put on by Councilor Ortiz, who's looking for more information um, about the process. And, yes. Uh, she, I don't, she, obviously, she's not here. She had a prior engagement this evening. Uh, but I, I um, where are we on this process on the 65 Ferris Jade? I'm sorry if I, if I glossed over that. So where are we, are, do we, has it been put out for an RFP? Where are we right now? I'm sorry, you may have already answered, <laughs> I just glossed over. So, so. It, it has been declared surplus, so it was just a survey of department heads to see if it's needed. Yeah. Um, we've tried to work with the applicants to see if they want to redeem the property, um, but they, they have not. So now that the redemption period of one year has expired, we can, we can start the process of doing the request for proposal, which I will be, starting very soon, probably tomorrow, this week. Okay, because um, the last time we dealt with this vote on this committee, my notes here, and it was on September 12th is when we had a motion at this level to mm -hmm. declare it surplus. Yes. And so, uh, from my perspective, I, I like to see this thing move forward. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, if the council who represents that area has any questions, mm -hmm. as a courtesy to that councilor, I certainly would Mm -hmm. Step back a little bit, but until such time, I hope we can move this as quick as forward as quickly as possible. Yes, I mean, obviously, we don't want to take properties away from people, but right, but we wouldn't be doing this unless it was fairly egregious. We've mm -hmm. given, in my understanding, we give this individual plenty of opportunities here to reclaim the property, um, to pay the taxes, and to get, regain control. Uh, it's property rights, as I understand it, as mm -hmm. uh, in the court system. Uh, it's very lenient. They allow these folks a, a tremendous opportunity to get back. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's not easily done to take yes. things something like this over. So um, I'll be willing to second it. Uh, so I'm not sure what we're doing here, is, what the motion is, because we're, you don't, I'm not sure what, we're what this. I did get communication from city council that you guys wanted a list of all the tax lien properties, and I do have that. I can pass it out. Yeah, that would um, be helpful. All right. Please, thank you. Sure. Do you have any questions? No. Hi. Do you remember about that? Yes. Um, attorney uh, Carrigan, can you please give us uh, your legal opinion about the process and how things should be moving and how we, uh, as a counselor, has been dealing with this situation before, It's uh, whether it's, it's uh, Correct, or your legal opinion about it in the, sure, this sure. specific situation? Sure. So, um, so just to to give the uh, committee um, some peace of mind, uh, to this point, by all means, the city has uh, uh, handled this case uh, by the book. In fact, we may have even been a little bit more lenient than 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 we we could have been. Um, the taxes in this particular case have not been paid in over ten years. Um, the land court case began in 2013. Uh, the property owner was given adequate notice of the land court proceedings uh, to foreclose on the tax lien. Um, the property owner has uh, refused to uh, acknowledge the city's right to collect um, its taxes 
and to, uh, uh, and to move forward with the land court process. So as Liza mentioned, it was actually June 21st of last year. Uh, we completed the, uh, the land court process. Uh, judgment entered for the city. Uh, it was at that point that technically the city became uh, the record owner of the property. However, subject to uh, the delinquent taxpayer's right to redeem, which is uh, good for one year. So the tax at this particular stage, um, outstanding taxes with, with interest, which as the committee knows, uh, accrues at 16% uh, at this particular stage, is up to approaching $60,000. Um, so we have additional costs over and above that. We've had to insure the property. Um, we've had uh, court costs and expenses associated with um, um, our attempts to evict the occupants. Just a quick note on that front. Um, uh, I believe it was sometime in late 2016, uh, certainly well after we had taken title to the property, we initiated uh, eviction proceedings after several attempts to convince the occupants to redeem the property and resolve the case, put it to rest. Um, we filed a, uh, an eviction complaint, summary process complaint in housing court. Uh, we eventually obtained a judgment. We then obtained an execution. Um, on the day that we were, the day before we were scheduled to um, uh, move the occupants out by constable and mover, uh, the occupants went into court and obtained a, essentially a 90 day stay of execution. So the case was on hold for a period of time. That stay of execution actually expired on the redemption uh, deadline, which was June 21st of this year. Um, the occupants went in one last time, I believe on or around the date um, of the expiration and asked the court for a further extension. The court denied the request. So basically at this point in time, uh, we have the full blessing of both the land court and the housing court to take the property and to remove the occupants and all their belongings. Um, we don't want to do that. Uh, we prefer just to be paid the tax, but at this point in time, it's beyond the expiration of the redemption period. So the delinquent taxpayer has no right to come forward and, and demand that they take the property back upon payment. We don't have to accept payment at this point. And so what we plan to do, as Liza mentioned, is we're going to basically um, put this property out for RFP and we're gonna ask for solicitations to, for someone to acquire the property with the occupants and let that new owner deal with, with the delinquent taxpayer, either start demanding rent from them or, or to initiate eviction at that point. Um, at any point in time, I suppose um, it has happened in the past. I, I mean, in fact, I've represented clients who have uh, come to the city after the expiration of the redemption period and actually redeemed the property. So the city has done it. We don't have to, though. Um, and so I think that's why we're bef coming before the council at this particular time. I don't know where things stand with these occupants. I know they've been in touch with uh, various lenders and working on some sort of a financing plan. They need to come up with about $65,000 probably to cover all of the uh, expenses at this point. And if they did, I guess the city would have to make a decision. Do we accept payment and give them back the property or do we, or do we not? Um, and do you have any court, uh, any uh, papers from the court in terms of the, uh, and the, uh on the resolution that they have take, taken? Thank you. Oh, uh, say that again? Do you have any paperwork from court in yes. terms of um, the resolution that they have taken about this particular property that you can submit for the record for this committee? Um, I could, except that I did not bring No, just, just submit it for the record, and that way we can, and next time that we have it, Fine. have a discussion, yeah. we have the perspective of the court, um, both um, the housing court and the land court as well. Fine. I'll, uh, what I'll submit uh, this evening um, will be the judgment from the land court, um, which conveys title to the city, and then also the execution from the housing court, which authorizes the city to take possession of the property uh, by use of a constable or sheriff. Um, uh, let me ask you a quick question. Yeah. Why, uh, if the city would like to move forward with a, a bidding process on this property, why don't we start the process of uh, evicting the, uh, the person if we already have the court resolution for this? Um, the decision was made uh, above my head not to evict the occupants at this particular time. So we've decided that what we 
want to do. Um, and I, I can only tell you that I think the decision was made that this may be the most humanitarian way to do it. We're just going to sell the property um, and make, make, try to make our money back um, and uh, let the new owner deal with the delinquent taxpayer as a new tenant. Um, so certainly, I mean, the option is to evict um, the tenants and to sell the property free of tenants. I mean, I, and yeah, because I mean, uh, to me personally, I wouldn't uh, like to see this uh, the situation in terms of having a um, having to approve in, 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 uh, a property that has been sold by the city with people on it, previous owners. So it's kind of difficult to to deal with it. But that's that's thinking ahead of time. Um, councilors, do you have any questions? I do. Councilor Plant. You first. Thank you. So, uh, Liza St. Ange, uh, Mr. Chairman, was able to give us this uh, uh, document. I think it's worthy of a, a brief discussion as to what we're seeing, what this means, how far back is this. I guess I can find that. But I think it's important. And also the veracity that the I've, I've heard about these munis reports in the past, and sometimes uh, they're not completely accurate. Um, and I just want to know how much confidence we have that, these, that this information is correct, mm -hmm. because once your name is on here, your address is on here, mm -hmm. the last thing we want to do is make, you know, is to, you sh and you sh if you shouldn't be on here and you're, and you're on here, that's a, that's a problem. So can you just talk to us a little bit about this document? Okay. So this is a Munis report generated from our system. There may be a lot of, there are a lot of mistakes in this, in this list. Um, for example, you look, look at um, like 63 Newberry Street. Um, page. You see it many times on the front. Just, just try to stay about, just try to talk about mm -hmm. um, the specifics, mm -hmm. not necessarily in the specific so, address, please. For example, 63 Holly and Newberry Street, you see it many times here. That's a vacant lot that in the past was a, a condo that had many units. So there is a lot of work to be done um, in this list. Um, a lot of these properties are already in land court. They're in the process of foreclosures. Um, some of them um, were working on correcting the tax lien to um, be able to foreclose on it. So um, this is just what's generated um, from our system. So just in the, in the layman's terms, what I have here in my hand is the listing of documents of individuals who have failed to pay their taxes on their properties. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going back as far back as 1982 and maybe even further. This is done, you, this is done by year, right? That's what it looks like. It, it, it goes back to 1982, that's the. Mm -hmm. And so what it has, it has the, the name, the, the, the location, mm -hmm. the owner, mm -hmm. the principal that is due, the interest that's due, how much each day until it's paid the per diem, mm -hmm. and then the combination of how much it is. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this is the complete list of individuals with warts, meaning there may be some. There may be some. There may be some properties that are already city-owned property that may be in here that we're waiting for the redemption period. So I wouldn't um, say that it's 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. So which of these is it broken down by which are you said which are in the redemption process? No. Do we know who those are? Um, I have uh, my personal list. I'm sure the city attorney has their own um, personal list of properties. Okay. I noticed that the city of Lawrence is also listed on here. That can't be right, can it? That, that's why I'm saying there, it, it's not 100% accurate. Um, It is what so how our, good is this list if it's not if it's inaccurate? I mean, so I, we can't really. I when I first started working for the city, I try to create my own list of tax lien. But the problem is, I um, there's so many redemptions in in a year that I can't um, honestly keep track track of every tax payment that comes in th into the city. So um, I do go back to this list and, and try to. Um, inquire about the properties with the legal department. If it's um, abutting a, a already city-owned property, I look at the list, see if the abutting property is here, and try to get statuses that way. So if I go through this list, 
with no confidence, the bottom line on this is that there's $19,844,000, almost $20 million apparently of back taxes that are owed in the city. Some of them have been around for some while, and this, these tougher ones probably back in the 80s and the 90s, mm -hmm. are, people are probably either deceased, they probably are bankrupt, probably we've mm -hmm. gone after them, and there's no, you know, it's gonna be difficult to get money yeah. from some of these individuals. Um, but that's still a lot of money. Can mm -hmm. you, this is a snapshot in time. Mm -hmm. And what I don't know is how we're doing as a city. Are we improving? Are we getting more in the last three, four, five, six years? Where's the trend line? Are we, was the number 30,000, 30 million at one time, mm -hmm. like two or three years ago? Was it, was it six million? We've made a lot of improvements. So. I have um, all this. I can go back and, and, and come back with a report of what I had back, you know, when I first started compared to now. Um, but we are making great progress now with, with our, own legal department and the outside council. It, it's, I, I'm seeing a lot of progress and a lot of tax payments. But I, I, I would like to see which direction we're going in mm -hmm. uh, with this, if we're making progress. I, I'm led to believe that we are making progress. I'm led to believe that if your name is on the list and you're looking for a permit or you're looking for something from the mm -hmm. city, you will be denied. Mm -hmm. And because of that, more there's less people who are, who are, um, and tax title, and, and, and mm -hmm. they're in, they're in. I'm not right sure the right word. They're they're in compliance with our ta with our with the taxes. Mm -hmm. But I like to see that if you don't. I mean, I'm sure someone has that number or mm -hmm. or that trend line. I'm sure Mark Ionello Kelly um, Oaks from the treasurer it's would just, be just helpful for us. I mean, I just think that. Mm -hmm. Every now and then we have somebody saying, I can't believe you're doing this with taxes. Mm -hmm. There are all these unpaid taxes and you're going to go after blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. now if they're watching tonight, mm -hmm. they're going to hear me say $19 million in back taxes owed to the city. And they're going to say, what are you doing about that $19 mm -hmm. million in back taxes? So what we need to do is I think it's the narrative is, well, it was actually $26 million. Yes. We've been able to go down to 19. Mm -hmm. We're aggressively doing it. 14 of these are going to be in redemption. We're in tax title and going through the court system on 40 of these properties. And so I think people like it if we're making progress. What they're concerned about is we're not doing anything. And I don't think mm -hmm. that's true. Absolutely. But, I, but that's why if mm -hmm. you give us that information or to me, that's helpful. Because I can say, well, this is what we're doing mm -hmm. as a city. This is what they're doing. I'll be um, happy to work with uh, the treasurer and legal department to get you a better um, snapshot of, of where we are right now. And well, this is the snapshot of where we are, but, I, but, but, but more you know, what, what's yeah. in land core, what we're working on, and, and the takings that we're correcting. And context, like too. Mm -hmm. Context is important because if you just give me a number, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's a good number or a bad number. Is that an improvement? Are we slipping? I don't yeah. know. So that's helpful. Context. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, good evening. Two of my questions has been asked, so I'm not going to repeat it myself, but um, you and I, we've been in contact in the past when people call me, you know, what the property are for sale. Mm -hmm. And if I show, you know, even though I heard correctly that um, this is not an accurate list, mm -hmm. and even if my name is in, Mm -hmm. I can go to you and say, you know, I'm, I'm just going to make a plan and I'm going to continue doing. So mm -hmm. we not quite clear what we are going to do yet. Mm -hmm. But if it, tomorrow someone, um, you know, is watching the meeting and, uh, the meeting and asks me, mm -hmm. is something that I can refer to you mm -hmm. and you can give it enough information if they are looking at specific from this list. Um, if someone does call me that if it's something on this list, I can definitely look up the information and confirm whether it's 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 an accurate um, figure or not. Okay. So basically, the the last information you're going to be able to tell whenever that person come with a specific address and mm -hmm. just kind of concern about and and also it's going to be a process. It's not something that. I can put a read tonight, and I can start the process tomorrow. Yeah, we have right? to do we have to do a little research to make sure that. Um, I'm gonna continue referring people to you. Then, mm -hmm, absolutely. Thank you. No Thank you, <laughs> councillors. Um, we obviously have a, um, um, new information 
um, about this specific um, item that we're dealing with. Uh, at this point, um, we 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 uh, have the opportunity to either uh, inform the the full council about this or take this uh, item and table. The item at this uh, at this level. Uh, what do you councilors prefer to do? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, this was actually put on the city council agenda by uh, the council from District A, who uh, had, uh, I think she would readily admit that this is part of uh, learning more about the process and, and about how, uh, how this, when things are in tax title, the lien process and how things go, more as an informational source for her. Um, we're not holding anything back. 65 Ferry Street is already going. It's already going through its steps. Mm -hmm. This is an informational source. My sense is, as a courtesy to our colleague, that we table this here. Right. And then um, she can certainly bring this up. She can watch this. She can ask questions if she needs to. Mm -hmm. But I let, as a courtesy, we'll let her make the decision as to what, right. how she wants I to proceed. I second you're going to make that as a I'm going to motion a table. Yeah, All right, there second. is a motion on the table. Properly second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye the item has been tabled. Um, there is two items on the on the table matters that we would like to speak today, and this is. Uh, can I get a motion to take um, items one sixty three or nine out of the uh, table matters? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Uh, we, um, uh, Liza, what is uh, um, one thirty? Uh, 27 Bennington Street. Mm -hmm. As you may recall, I, had, I came to you guys a, few, a couple months, a few months ago to rescind the vote to do a disposition to the abutter of 27 Bennington Street um, because he no longer was interested in the property. After that, I sent letters to the other abutter. She came in and was interested in the property for parking and green space. So um, that's why I'm here, just to talk about disposing it to the other abutter. Um, it's gonna be the same sale price, 2,400 to a um, dollar a square foot. Right. Lot is 2,400 square feet. It's gonna be used for parking and green, green space. It's gonna have conditions to provide a &R plan, landscape plan, storm water management plan, and the restriction of no construction. It must be utilized for parking and green space on, on All right. only. Do we have the, the applicant here? Yes. All right, can, I get, can, I, can we ask a couple of questions? Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing good, and yourself? Uh, name and address for the record, please. My name is Joanna Santos, and I'm here representing my mother, Ana Ortega, and our address is 2325 Bennington Street, okay. Lawrence, Massachusetts. Are you aware of the, the restriction that you have? Yes, I am. On the contract? All right, Councillor, there is any question for the applicant? I have no question. I have a question. Sure, Council Laplante. I need to get your name I'm through you. What's your name? My name is Joanna Santos. And I am the daughter of the applicant. Oh. I'm here in representation of my mother, Ana Ortega. Ana Ortega is the name mm -hmm. of my list. Okay, so you're representing her this evening. Yes, she's, she's working. She couldn't take the day off. That's fine. Okay. So as long as you're, I think the chairman is right on the money here. As long as your mom understands fully that, that this is for parking and open, not for open space, but not for building a structure. Yes, we are aware of. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, councilors, uh, what's the motion on this item? Motion to approve. All right, there is a motion on the table. Uh, motion to set up the table of recommendation. I'll, se I'll oh, second that one. I'll second that. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, just to um, um, make you aware, our next meeting is gonna be August 15 at 7 p.m. and we're gonna be discussing this item at that level with the, with the full council. Thank you so much. All right, our next item on the agenda is item um, 33616. Can I get a motion to take it out of the table matters? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Liza, we have uh, a disposition for 39 Benetton Street, uh, map 150, lot 63. Mm -hmm. uh, can you please go through um, the, explain to us Mm -hmm. uh, this disposition, please. Okay. So this was a request for a proposal with a minimum bid of $35,000. Um, we got a um, bid ranging from $35,000 to $45,000. We received, received a total of six bids. 
Um, what, what I did for you is um, I provided the comparative criteria that's on the request for proposal. And then this sheet is a summary of the six proposals that we received. Um, on the top, you're going to see the score that we um, assigned to, to each item. So highly advantageous being 15, advantageous 10, not advantageous 5, and unacceptable 0. Um, there's a summary of all the applicants and the score that they all received. Um, in this particular case, um, the Real Estate Task Force select their um, bidder number six, Jose A. Navarre and Honoria Fernandez, bid amount was $35,000. Their score was um, 105, the same as Bread and Roses, um, and the committee um, selected them based on the comparative criteria and the score. All right, Liza, let me ask you a couple of mm -hmm. questions. How many times this property has this property been on the market or as a, in the bidding war? Two times. Two times. Mm -hmm. So what was the, um, what happened that we didn't see it on the first time? What happened with that? So um, when we went to bid the first time, it was the same minimum bid of $35,000. After um, it went out to bid, the committee decided, we talked about putting in the application that we wanted an owner occupant. We realized that that was not part of the comparative criteria, so we denied all of the applications and re bid it with that criteria of owner occupant for it? highly advantageous um, and then advantageous use compatible with existing zoning district, which is an R2 district. This is an R3. Yes. Uh, actually, this, this particular in the corner is actually B1, and the rest is R, R3. So this is B1. So, Liza, um, so this, pro this, this property has been in the market twice. Yes. The first time the committee have decided not to uh, bring it up in front of the council. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the second time, uh, the committee have decided to pick the lower bidder. What was the reason for that? As I explained, we have a scoring system. We look at the highly advantageous. Um, the city wants to see the, the best use in the property. So um, we, we establish a comparative criteria. As you know, it's not an auction. It's a sealed bid process. We're looking for the best, um, what we want for the city. We want it owner occupant um, as the highly advantageous. And then we look at everything else. We look at the site development proposal. We score that. Um, we look at the schedule, who's going to, uh, who has a, a good schedule? Who's going to finish the project um, good? Um, the expertise history, um, prior projects, and things like that, and how, the benefits of the community. How the, the com <laughs> let me let me just cut you out of there. Let me because I, I read something on the benefit that the the person that you guys are want to sell it is the abutter. Yes. So that was a, that. Right the, border, though. the benefits to the community they score high on that because they're the abutter, and the committee um, thought that it would be good to have an abutter because they're already in the area. They can keep an eye on the, the property right away, and um, be around for the construction. So that um, brought them up a little well, higher. My question too. is that this is not the direct abutter. This is the second house over. Mm -hmm. And do they own 43 Bennington Street? Yes. The applicant? Mm -hmm. So essentially they're going to leave one property. Yeah, so um, in the application they specify that um, what, they're, what they wanted to do is um, rehab the property, move into the single family home, and leave the other one as a rental property. All right. So um, uh, I was uh, contact. Uh, by one of the, uh, the person that bid on this property. And they are questioning the process. And also, uh, on the public participation during last meeting, uh, the, the person come over and uh, indicate mm -hmm. that the process has been violated. Mm -hmm. And the integrity of the board is being questioned. Mm -hmm. 
We would, I, I personally, as a chair of this committee, would like to uh, get the proper recommendation and information to the full council. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, as a city, it's, it's, we, don't, we can choose to do an auction, sealed bid process, direct it. If we have a property that's valued more than $35,000, we need to um, advertise and, and do a request for proposal. It's not based on the amount, it's based on the comparative criteria. So we establish a minimum bid. We do look at, at the price being offered as, as a consider, but it's really the, the comparative criteria on the application. Um, if it was an auction, we'd have to pick the highest bidder. But because we want to have a better control of what we have in the city, what it's being built, we do a comparative criteria because it's not just about the money, it's about re, um, rehabilitating the whole entire neighborhood and stabilizing that. Um, All right. So, so that's why we do the seal bid. Liza, just to be fair to the other applicants, we will, I personally would like to see uh, and get a, a legal opinion on this item before I, I vote in favor or against it. So we have attorney um, Currigan here. Who was involved in well, the process? Uh, if you... He's probably not aware of what's going on at this point. Uh, we would like to request that information and probably have this, the committee um, as well on how uh, we make that decision and get into this determination. Uh, that's my, my personal opinion. It's up to the board, obviously, uh, to decide. I would like to open the, uh, the question to uh, the floor to any councillors that have any question. Well, that's my personal opinion about this. The last thing I would like to see is something um, that is being questioned and move forward without having the opportunity mm -hmm. and proper opinion or legal opinions on this matter. I hope that the, that summary and my explanation did clear up some of your questions. Mm -hmm. So the question is uh, to you. Uh, yes. right. No, it's, it's to you. Sure. That's why I'm just. So you basically propose that we can table the items, we can sell, uh, we can send for a recommendation that way we're going to have and to make sure to be on the safe side, right, that we are following the problem. The proper process, yes. yes. And uh, if, it, if it was any, um, um, any um, something that, um, if, if it was any violation on the process, or perhaps if it is one of the bidders that uh, feel like it wasn't fair, uh, I, we should give it the opportunity to um, through. I can guarantee you there's no violations in the process. No, 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 I'm not, the, saying, the it, I'm not saying that it is. Mm -hmm. If, because it could be, I mean, anything can happen. Right. And it's, it's not like it's your fault, it's the committee's fault. Mm -hmm. We just wanna make sure that we, as a committee, uh, recommend that what's what's and the and the process has been followed and make sure everything is also ready to go. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Plant, do you have any question? Yeah, I, I want to hold off on that strain of, sure. of questioning for a moment. I just have a question regarding the actual individuals that were selected. Yes. So when I when I they they say that their family will move into this property and they're going to rent their where, where they're currently mm -hmm. living. I'm reading we have this is a quote we have repaired houses and built them from scratch. The value of the houses have gone up. Mm -hmm. Now we live in a great country and we can certainly flip properties and we can make lots of money if we do it right. Is this if does the city find it objectionable or does it have an opinion? on whether or not uh, this individual or this applicant purchases the property, makes the, makes the, makes whatever uh, fixes need to be made, and then flips it. Does the city have a, right, have a thought about that at all, or does the city does not have a, an opinion about flipping properties after we just sold it? I don't have an opinion on, on that. So if, if, one or, if one individual says that we're going to do this, Another organization says, you know, we have a track record of doing this and staying something for the long haul and they're able to somehow mm -hmm. show and prove. And Bread and Roses had the same score, for example, and they're an organization that's been around the city for some time um, and they're not in a position where, at least I'm not that I'm aware of, that a lot of house flipping going on mm -hmm. there. They usually have some structures. Do we, I just, part of me thinks that the, the, the drive behind selling it to these individuals is because they're going to, fix it, they live two doors down, mm -hmm. they're going to live there, 
and we think that's fantastic and they may stay there for 5, 10, 15, 20 years and that sounds great. Mm -hmm. What happens if they say, you know, some of the market's hot mm -hmm. right now. It's tremendously hot. It's burning. I can take this property. We sold 35, put $15,000 worth of work in it. Mm -hmm. We now have this house for 50000 We could flip it for one fifty. Mm -hmm. We can triple the price on this property like this. Yeah. Um, I, I completely see, um, and we take, we look at all, we take that into consideration. Um, in this particular case, we were not, the, the entire task force were not, um, we had different opinions as to who we wanted to um, give the property to, but we come together, we talk about every point, and then we come to a, to a decision. So anyway, that, that was my question, and the answer that I'm hearing is you don't, you as a representative of the city don't have an opinion as to whether or not if a house was, after we sell a house and it's flipped, we don't have, you as a city agent don't have an opinion on that. I, I don't have an opinion. I prefer that it stays with the owner occupant and that, you know, they, they're to those houses and, and, and they have tenants there. It stabilizes the neighborhood. For me, it, it, it's more of, of a stabilization for the neighborhood than to sell it to an investor who's out of town or, you know, to me, this is a, a better proposal because of that. Um, Your opinion is valuable to me, but it's even what's more valuable to me is the real property task force, which made this decision. Because there, uh, we, we, the city has said to this independent group, mm -hmm. and it may be helpful for us to know again who's on that real, uh, real, the pro real property task force. Mm -hmm. But it has said, okay, this, this is the one that we do. This is the organization, or this is the, the individuals that we want. I'm really curious to know as a city how we feel about that, more so than your own personal opinion, although mm -hmm. I, I, I'm mm -hmm. grateful to, to know what that is. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sense from the city's perspective? Um, I'll let Brian answer that question. And it may not be any, which is, wouldn't surprise me either. Um, Councilor, it, I'm going to do my best to answer your question as succinctly as I can. Um, the, the idea of, of an owner-occupant for this particular property was, was pitched to the prospective buyers as a, as a criteria, not as a condition or restriction. Um, that said, this matter is coming before the council. I don't see any reason why we couldn't, if the council, if that's something that the council wanted us to do, um, we're going to have to draft a purchase and sale agreement in this case. Uh, we could have a restriction, a deed restriction uh, for the prospective buyer. And in many cases, um, when folks come in and get financing from the city uh, for redevelopment or for neighborhood improvement, uh, there are conditions very much like that, that the property has to be held for a certain length of time, could be three, five, 10 years or more. Um, otherwise, if the property is sold in that interim period, that's a violation of the agreement, the funds have to be repaid to the city. You know what I'm talking about. Um, in this particular case, I don't see any reason why we couldn't condition the sale of this property upon uh, this particular applicant's um, agreement to, to occupy the property uh, for a certain length of time. I don't know how long we would want to set that restrictive period, but we could do that, and we could even, um, we could even uh, implement some sort of a plan whereby if the applicant decides that they want to sell during that restricted period, they have to, the city would have the first option to buy it back. There are a number of things we could do. Um, the bottom line is, I think, I understand where the questions are coming from. I understand that the, the, uh, the aggrieved other applicant is, is in the audience today, and I understand that they're concerned that, you know, they had a higher bid that didn't get picked. And we went through the, the process. The, uh, the pitch that was made um, by the winning applicant was a very good one. Uh, these are Lawrence residents that have a home in the very same neighborhood, hard hardworking folks who appear to have uh, good financing, who appear to have experience in, in, in uh, remodeling homes. And the pitch that they made to us was that they wanted to take over this home and, and change a, a turn a, a neighborhood nuisance into their new home. So, I mean, we went through that process. Again, we had bread and roses as an applicant. I mean, if you were to compare the bread and roses application to the winning application, I mean, it's apples and oranges. I mean, bread and roses is very professional. This is what they do for, as a business. Um, theirs looks great. 
But when we got down to it, we looked at Bread and Roses and we, and we determined, well, if Bread and Roses takes it, that's a nonprofit entity. Are we going to be able to derive the same property tax revenue? So we kind of looked at all these different factors and we, we kicked it around. We had a fairly lengthy meeting. Uh, there were several of us uh, around the table and, and we scored everything. Um, certainly, um, I was very much, I will be honest with you, I was very much in favor of the winning applicant. I don't know the winning applicant. I couldn't pick her and her husband out of a lineup. I have no allegiance to them. But again, we looked at all these different factors that you see here. Uh, we scored it accordingly. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, even though um, Mr. Garcia and Mr. Martinez had the higher bid, uh, for a number of reasons, the Bread and Roses and Navarre Fernandez uh, applications came out at a, at a slightly higher score. And then again, we determined that uh, you know we would take Navarre Hernandez because of that property tax issue. Um, so I mean, that's how it went. Um, I don't know how we could have done it any more uh, um, effectively, uh, I guess openly, unless we were to conduct public hearings for these types of things, which I mean, I'm happy to do. I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't. But um, I don't think we're, we're required to. And I'm happy to do a little bit of research and work with attorney body and we'll put together some sort of legal opinion on this particular one, cites statutes and regulations that apply and so forth. But mm. I mean, I, I, I was involved in this. I don't see anything that um, should call into question um, what we've done so far and what's being put in front of the city council for approval here. I like your suggestion and I was thinking along the same terms as far as having terms and I was thinking, I'm not sure what Habitat has, they have the same kind of thing where you can't sell the property until you've been there X number of years. I think it's 10, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what the right number is, but I'm, I'm willing to work on that number. Could you remind us again, the members of the Real Property Task Force, who is on that? Uh, well, who, made this, this, who reviewed this application? Yeah, okay, so the Real Property Task Force, uh, Liza, do you remember? <laughs> so um, Real Property um, Task Force um, includes Chief of Staff, Assessor, Treasurer, City Attorney's Office, City attorney, any? Any, city, any of the city attorneys? Oh. Just someone from the legal department. So I'll start from the beginning. Um, uh, someone from the mayor, either the mayor, chief of staff, um, legal department, assessor, treasurer, land use planner, myself, business and economic development director, and planning director. Not all of us were available for the meeting. We meet once a month, sometimes. In this particular case, when we met for this property, um, Treasurer Office was dealing with um, some issues with, um, it was a, a, not a good day for her. Um, in the um, meeting, there was the land use planner, my sole business and economic development director, chief of staff, and legal department. Right, so and it was not unanimous. There was some who wanted bread and roses, um, but at the end of the day, majority ruled. So, uh, the, the chairman is, is the chairman has heard some concerns, um, and, and it, what, was, it was actually in the public participation last time. When, whenever and, and and whenever we go through this process, it's not unusual. Mm -hmm. Where we hear that someone says, "It's been this is thing. This thing's been crooked since the get go. Mm -hmm. um, we're not getting the fair shake on this thing. It, it happens. It's not atypical. I say it happens mm -hmm. all the time, but mm -hmm. it's not atypical, um, and because people don't fully understand the process mm -hmm. and the situation, and a lot of it is judgment too. I mean, when you put a number score on it, mm -hmm. I mean it's." It's what you believe as an individual based on your experience and based on your position. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, it's very uh, subjective. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, there's a human element associated with this and it's not necessarily, mm -hmm. you know, this linear equation and mm -hmm. just put numbers together, though it is obviously we put numbers there, but it's, it's different. So it, and that's why it's hard. It's, it's a hard decision. I mean, when we met, we were there for, for a few hours and, and we were going back and forth. It's, it's not an easy decision, but we try to be as transparent, and very transparent, very open. And, and it, you know, it's, the application is very clear where we have highly advantageous, advantageous 
not advantageous, just acceptable, and we try to give guidelines guidelines for, sure. for that. Let me just. I, I think I think there's a discussion here to potentially table this. My my thought would be, I would support a motion to table. I, my thought would be, uh, what we don't want to do is we don't want this to linger. Mm -hmm. We want we want to get we want the chairman's questions to be answered as quickly as possible. He may or may not like the answer, but we should have a vote up or down soon. Either way, whatever we decide we, we want to do with it. I just don't, uh, we're, we're, we want to move this property. We mm -hmm. want to see this change. We want to bring the revenues in and mm -hmm. do things with it rather than having it stagnant. So that's my only request. Mr. Sure. Um, before we make the motions, I would like to get, um, get a couple of questions up there, up there and that way we can get prepared mm -hmm. for next time. Yep. Uh, so the conditions that we have on that, um, <clears throat> on that, uh, RFP are the same conditions as the real property task for judge the, the, the applicants or how they make the decisions eventually? I, I, can you repeat your question? So there is some conditions on the on that um, RFP mm -hmm. for anybody to come over and mm -hmm. say, yes, I want to bid on this property. Mm -hmm. and those are the same conditions that the, the real, real property uh, task force of the city of Lawrence uh, make a determination. Yeah, so in the Perhaps, other because what I'm saying is, I mean, is this, is, there is something there that says, oh, if you're in a butter, you're going to, uh, you, mm. we prefer uh, the, the butters no, or no, this no. and that, or first time home buyers or oh, experience on this and that. Mm -hmm. can, we pro can you provide those conditions mm -hmm. as So well? they're, they're right in here. Um, in this uh, document that I gave you. So these are comparative criteria. This is where we compare all the applications and we score them. So right in there, um, let's see on benefit number 10, benefit of proposal to the community. So that reads evidence that the project will have a positive and beneficial impact on the community, includes specific examples of how community will be positive, impacted, increased in property at value, um, employment opportunities, education, et cetera. In this, um, uh, yeah. yeah, right here. Okay. So you were reading number 10. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. Yeah. Um, I have it now, I didn't mm -hmm. get it before. Okay, so basically this is on the- um, This is on the application. This I is on the application. Mm -hmm. And based on those, on the certain terms and conditions, you guys mm -hmm. judge the mm -hmm. applicants. Yes. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and this is exactly how it was on 39 Bennington Street. Um, so we look at financial capa capability, benefits to community, the schedule, the proposal. And Voters, first time home buyer, are those, are so, those right here? Uh, in, no, there's because, not. Because I mean, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the score, on the, on the score, you actually Kind of like you know, put it on red that the the person that was picked it was one of their voters. Yeah, not so the direct, but it, it lived on the neighbor. So I think that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why they got a 15 rather than an investor who's not in the area would have gotten a 10 because they're already in the community. It's gonna stabilize that neighborhood they're already around. All right. Um, so basically, the councilors, I would like to um, uh, to make it clear and to make a, and to make the process fair for everybody, I will, we would like to. Uh, uh, I mean, at least I would like to see a legal opinion on this. Um, so and the also, will be yeah. legal with that. well, let's let's make the motion first, and then we table it. Motion to. But you, I'm, I'm not sure, through you, Mr. Right. I'm not sure what your question is for. The, I'm, I would like I to get a legal opinion in terms in terms of um, what the city is supposed to do in terms of. Uh, having this process done and, uh, and basically go from there. And also, um, an opinion, and there is a share for the uh, Real Property Task Force? Or it's, it's, you, I you just get together and discuss? We meet on a, I run the meetings because I'm the asset officer, but everybody participates and, and Do you have um, minutes for this particular meeting? No, or we you don't. You guys don't take minutes. No, we just meet on a regular basis. 
to discuss, you know, when we acquire property, what we're going to do with the property, are we going to do an RFP, try to do a yard sale, things like that. We just want to get the most information we can and mm -hmm. that way we can make the proper decision. I mean, at least that's what I would like mm -hmm. to see. And um, that's why we have um, so many city departments involved. You have treasurer's office, you have the assessor's office, you have all these departments. It's not one person making, making a, a decision. Um, I'd be happy to make the motion, Mr. Chairman. I just need to know exactly what you're looking for to make uh, that motion. It, uh, basically, we would like, I would like to see uh, from, the, uh, from our legal department um, what uh, explain to us, not the process, but at least what we can do about this item and um, having a, uh, an, an, a situation that one of the applicants didn't feel like the process was fair, what was the proper um, how we can proceed with this. I mean, you're going to have people who are going to think I it's understand, not. but I mean, uh, this board have a, a, a specific mm -hmm. um, situation that we need to entertain or, or go for. And uh, I will respect uh, the Real Property Task Force, but um, we got to recommend that, that um, the, the council something that is, 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 is it's what it is. So I guess the motion would be to, to ask the city attorney or your mo I'm trying to reword your motion. To ask the city attorney to provide for us the process by which um, properties such as this are disposed of with the use of the real property task force as well as the city council. So what's that situation? Uh, what, how does that, how does, that's in bolts of that process. Um, what's, is there a second part of that as well? You're trying to deal with allegations, yes. and I'm not sure how you're going to get to that no, point. No, we're not going to get to that point, but I mean, at least we can, we can make a determination based on what's legal. So, that, so I think that's, is that all you're looking for then, is the nuts and bolts legality, how we get to, to dispose of properties? Is that essentially all you're looking for here? And yes, and, and essentially uh, a recommendation that we're actually getting right now from Liza, but I mean, just to, and that when we open the, uh, the item again, that um, we would will, will like to see um, your opinion again, actually you're giving it to us, but I mean, uh, or somebody, another person from the um, Real Property Task Force. Uh, but you, the, you're running the meeting, so you'll be here. So you want the, I mean, they came yeah, we to, already they, have they, here, right, so. so they came to a vote. It was, there was obviously it was a vote that was fractured. It wasn't unanimous. She gave us that information. I'm not sure she required to, but she did. Yeah. She said it was whatever the vote was, I mean, yeah. whatever it was. Doesn't make a difference. But it was it was it was not unanimous. And so now Liza's job, whether or not she was for it or against it, is to is to, to provide present information to us. The majority's yes. position, whether she was with the majority or not with mm -hmm. the majority, that's irrelevant. She's supposed to bring us that majority opinion. Um, I guess if uh, I guess. I guess it would be helpful if you want to ask what the minority opinion is. I guess that would be you welcome to. So it was uh, yeah, but eventually, not, not right now. Eventually, okay. when we open the, the item, okay. again, when we open there this you go. item again. So nuts and bolts is all you're looking for? Yes, All right, there you go. Got it. The motion is tabled. I second it yep. with all the condition and recommendation that we being. You got it? Okay. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Um, can I get a motion to table item? Uh, one, uh, 336, 16, please. Motion to table. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Liza, there is any other item that we'd like to um, address today? No. Uh, Council, um, Council LaPlante and uh, Reyes, there is any other item that we'd like to speak today? That's it. All right, motion to adjourn. Nothing else. The move. We, are we never going to, I am going to get there. We're never going to talk about this. Are we done with this for a while? Um, we're not ready yet. We're okay. still waiting. Okay. Some information. Uh, second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Guys, have it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Liza. You're welcome.